Today's video is going to be on Ducks CDC Emerger. Uh, it's a nice floating fly. Uh, this right here you see is a size 22. I tie that generally in uh, 24. Uh, imitates midges and a really small betas. This 22 is a small betas. I tie a lot of them in size 20. And I also will show you a real quick uh, pick of a uh, version I tie for a sulfur in size 16 and 18. This is a size 16 sulfur. Uh, you can see I've uh, colored the last uh, half of the abdomen um, with brown and then I'll turn a little bit and you can see the uh, normal sulfur color. Uh, you've got a nice wing that looks like the wing fluttering and the trailing shuck. I find this really effective on the South Holston uh, where they're uh, very selective and also on the Elk River in West Virginia uh, during their late May, early June sulfur hatches. I'm very uh, positive this would be a great fly uh, for, to imitate the PMD out west, but uh, I haven't been able to make it out there for a PMD hatch for several years. Uh, but now I'll go through how easy this fly is to make. I'll start off by uh, crunching the barb and uh, starting with the Tiemco uh, light wire scud hook size 20 and I'll be uh, using a tying thread of what I like for the smaller flies is the 16-0 Vivas, which I find to be pretty strong uh, for, for the size. I'll go ahead and get that started, come on down to where I'm going to have the end of the abdomen back up a little bit and snip that off. Okay, next I'll take just a little wisp of Andron for the trailing shuck, and you can see it coming into view there. Trim off. What I do is uh, try to come across the top and then pull it down. Then I'll hold it right where I want it. I'll come on down. Now this is a point right here where you can build up the total abdomen abdomen with your tying thread uh, and again uh, if you're imitating a BWO you're really looking for a pretty slim abdomen, ad, abdomen on a size 20 and I'll go ahead and build that up with tying thread and I like a little bit of a segmented body so when I get it to where I my mind's memory says that's the, the size I'll turn whoop, let me get that down a little bit I'll turn it sideways. I take my black magic marker and I'll blacken about half inch of my tying thread. And then while it's in that position, I'll come up and give it a little segmentation, ending it of where I'm going to put the post in. And uh, I can see it, so hopefully. Just back up so that you can see it. So there we are sitting, uh, getting ready for the post. I, uh, on a size 20, I'll use a very thin post. So, so I've taken the uh, piece of yellow foam, and you can see roughly the size of the post to the body. Uh, the post is there for visibility. I just be that's that's the only purpose of it. I think you could make this fly just as easily with just the CDC that I'm going to put on a minute, but that post sticking up really allows me to see that fly. And by the way, I use this fly by itself, but I almost always use this fly as my upper fly uh, with a uh, dropper either below it or a couple of feet away a uh, midge or uh, a dry what uh, various dry to imitate what's hatching at the time um, because I can almost always pick up the yellow uh, sticking up. Okay, now I'm going to take a CDC feather. Now, this is a feather, you can see how roughly big it is to size 20. 
And this is just a judgment thing. Generally for 20, 22, 24, I'll take one feather like that and that will produce enough of the fibers uh, to create a good uh, wing that will really keep the fly floating well. Uh, now I'll go ahead and, and uh, show you how I strip the fibers off as best I can and tie it on. What I'll do is this is the uh, one size I've got. You can see from my fingers how big it is. That's probably enough of the CDC hackle for uh, a uh, 22 or 24. Uh, but I just kind of use judgment as I put it on. Uh, basically what I do, and I thought of this, or not thought of it, I didn't invent this method, but I saw a nice video by Charlie Craven where he did this. But I'll basically take a little bunch cut it off from one side kind of push it together and I hope you can see this I haven't found a good background that really shows this but I got just a very small bundle there and that stuff flies everywhere don't worry about it it's fairly cheap and uh, got a very small bundle I'll do this with uh, two total feathers uh, so I won't repeat that process but uh, I'll go ahead and show you how I tie this on again uh, with my uh, regards to Charlie Craven for showing uh, how easy this is to do. Okay, I have the little bit. What I'll do is I'll come up. You can see the length of it here. I'll go ahead and put this on the back side, about a half on the front and the end. A loose wrap, pull it tight, a couple wraps. Then I'll come back and get another little bunch, put it on this side, again doing the same thing, couple wraps there. Now I'll take a couple wraps up front, and this next is sort of a key step here, and I'm going to turn this toward me, but I'm going to try to move my camera and get it set. Okay, I rotate my vise upside down, and that's why I like a rotating vise, just because you can get position very quickly. Then I just stroke all the feathers down, and again, using the technique that uh, I saw on Charlie's video, I just come around that bunch. Don't worry if you don't get them all. I come around that bunch about three, four times, come up, turn it off. And now, I'll rotate the fly back up to the top. Now the fly's back up at the top, I'll go ahead and just trim a little bit of this errant stuff off, being careful not to cut my tying thread, which I do much too often. Come up behind it one time, and then I'll get just a wisp of dubbing. Uh, as you remember, the thorax on the... And you've seen the dubbing, so I'm not going to worry about do this. I just want you to see what a thin little noodle I have there of it. I move it up. Now I'll go ahead and take wraps front and back here, just to the point. When I get to it, see it's big enough. I'll strip off my the remaining dubbing, and at this point I'll throw a half inch because the fly is just about ready on there. And then, depending on the size of the fly, I prefer to fish, finish off with a whip finish, which I'll do. Because I can get to the 20. It's a little harder with the 24 and, and even the 22. And there's my whip finish. And now you can see where the tail is. About the body length, I'll cut the uh, shuck off. Then I'll rotate it. See that those fibers are about evenly spread around there, uh, which they are. Kind of tease them around there where you want them. And then I'll go to the final step. Now that they're teased around there, and I'm happy that I've got uh, enough, and I got probably this would be a minimum amount that I would have on a size 20. Uh, use your judgment, it would be 
20 on a 22 and a whole lot on a 24. Uh, use your judgment, but this will float the fly pretty well. I'll come up about the wing's length, cut that off, tease these down, kind of push the CDC down a little bit. So you can see that you've got uh, good coverage, and I'll zoom in a little bit on it. Okay, I've zoomed in. You can see a little bit more. You've got uh, good flotation. Uh, the real key thing to think about here is you're going to have from here on down, from here on down, underwater. So that's what the fish is going to see. That that uh, fly looking like it's just getting ready to emerge. It's very vulnerable at that point. The CDC here will float well and that yellow post will allow you to see it. And one thing I do do, I won't waste time now, but I'll put a drop of head cement right here and a drop right here to secure the tie. Just a tad. Uh, not enough to soak the feather certainly and I prefer to do it with the end of a needle. Uh, but then that is the fly and I would say you can use that technique uh, for any of the mayflies that actually do a stream emergence uh, and uh, do it in the various forms it might be. Uh, Coloring the abdomen is necessary to look like uh, you've got part of the shuck on there if necessary. I found that this very profile right here works fantastically on the Green River in Utah, uh, on the uh, South Holston uh, in Tennessee, uh, on the Elk River in West Virginia. Now, I could name a dozen other streams where this is always my upfly, and no matter what I'm fishing, this will catch as many fish as whatever I have on there as a trailer. It's just a great little attractor fly. I uh, hope you enjoyed the tie, and uh, thanks for watching. And by the way, the uh, camera I'm using now is a Pentax WG-10 waterproof. Uh, just a little large maybe to carry on the stream, but it's well worth it because this has the best macro mode I've ever seen. Uh, not only can you take an extreme close-up of, of an insect, but then uh, even on your big screen on the back, you can then zoom in and see the segmentation, as you can see the segmentation on this. And uh, I probably could show you how much you could zoom, and this is on the record mode and not on the video, which is uh, much more. In fact, I'll try to take a picture of this fly using that and see if I can figure out a way to put that at the end of my, uh, uh, my demo. Have a good day. Bye.